What is the most resilient parasite? An idea. Before we know anything about Inception, Cobb explains some of the finer points to us. Cobb is like a super spy sneaking up on trained guards and assassinating them, catching the ejecting shells like he's been trained by the CIA. This is the first clue as to what is actually happening in this film and also what's been done to the viewer's subconscious. But more on that later. And no, it's not about this movie being a metaphor for filmmaking since you've all heard that before and Nolan actually stated in an interview that he didn't intend to make a film about filmmaking but basically he pulled from what he knows. This dream conversion is perfect. He's being dunked one level up so the entire building is flooded. Well, I don't like trains. Foreshadowing. Or backshadowing, since it technically already happened. I offer you the satisfaction. It's not the way I deal with things. Mercy win. Ariadne? In Greek mythology, Ariadne is connected to mazes and labyrinths. There's some literal outside of the box thinking using the back of the graphing paper. When we're asleep, our mind can do almost anything. Oh, neurology lesson. The cafe explosions are an awesome effect to have a perfect dreamlike quality of anti-gravity. It's just a dream, then why are you sick? This scene also gives us our first clear glimpse into the amazing score of this film. You may not have noticed the transition, but the main theme of this movie is a slowed down version of the Edith Piaf song they used to wake up. And while we're talking about the score, let's not forget about the... That Inception popularized and have made their way into every trailer post-2010. Five minutes? We were talking for like at least an hour. In a dream, your mind functions more quickly, therefore time seems to feel more slow. That's how you do exposition. Mind blown. If walls closing in on you while being chased isn't a recurring nightmare for you, you're really missing out. <laughs> Saito ex machina. Six months a second level down and the third level is ten years. I want to see that movie. Show me Cobb and team spending ten years in a dream, hanging out, extracting, and incepting, what have you. Right, so what happens when we die? I drop in a limbo. Nolan reintroduces the fear of death into this operation with the sedative as a practical plot device. You mustn't be afraid to dream a little bigger, darling. For some, it was when he played Picard's clone. For others, it was his pure insanity in Bronson. For me, and a lot of other fans, this was the exact moment that Tom Hardy broke into our hearts to stay forever. Quick, give me a kiss. Flirting? How incredible is this fight scene? Five wins incredible, you say? I tend to agree. <laughs> Did you see that? I saw it, Yusuf. I saw it. The Snow Fortress level is such visual gratuitous magnificence. There's no real reason for it to take place here. As if Nolan thought, I think I'll make the final level on a snowy mountainside. And then he did. <laughs> Zero gravity win. The crumbling ruins of Limbo is one of the first things that intrigued audiences about Inception. 50 plus years of history and bizarre off-putting architecture. I was disappointed that you tried. As courteous as you can be while completely changing someone's psyche, replacing a strained relationship with a father wanting something better for his son is about as nice as you can get. After this scene, Killian Murphy will always be a win. Alright, last time I'll talk about the music, but from the time Cobb and Saito wake up, the score slowly builds towards the crescendo of Cobb seeing his kids. It's one of the best musical-led emotional roller coasters of all time. To be fair, this entire movie is a win, but what would an Inception video be without a little hypothesizing? My theory has always been that this movie is Cobb performing Inception on himself, to plant the idea in his mind that it's safe to go home and finally see the faces of his kids. Outside of the flashback scenes of Maul's death, Cobb is dreaming. But he's not trapped in a dream. He created every aspect of the dream in order to free himself from the guilt he feels over Maul's death. Every person in the entire movie is just a piece of Cobb's subconscious mind. They may all exist in the real world, in fact they likely do, but as far as the events of this movie, they're all projections. Let's start with the fact that Cobb is the only person whose subconscious spills into every dream sequence we see. Nolan makes a point of showing us at least one person or thing in every level that is only present because of Cobb. Maul sabotages the first extraction audition, then there's the suicide train, James and Philippa are present during the Mr. Charles gambit, Maul shoots Fisher at the fortress, and finally Maul holds Fisher captive in limbo. No one else ever brings their own projection into other people's dreams because they're all actually Cobb's dreams. He's the dreamer, subject, chemist, forger, and architect. Everything revolves around him throughout the entire movie. Even when two characters are without Cobb, the conversation comes back to him. 
Heck, Ariadne only quits initially because she's worried Cobb can't control them all. Not because they're planning a multi-billion dollar heist that could irreparably change a person's mind. Because, you know, she doesn't have many prospects or a life plan while attending college as an American in Paris. Now that we've established that every person in this movie is just one of Cobb's projections, let's take a look at some of the things they say and do to confirm it. Saito is the first person in the film to parrot Maul's words, Take a leap of faith. Back to Cobb when he would have no way of knowing the significance of that phrase. He even says it almost winkingly as if he knows it will spur Cobb's interest. But Joe, YouTube video guy, you might be saying, that's a common enough expression. Well then, how about when Miles tells Cobb, You want me to let someone else follow you into your fantasy? Come back to reality, Tom. Or when this random Cobble goon sent to capture Cobb says, I'm not dreaming now, I am dreaming. And when this different Cobble goon gets shot and goes down like a projection. All of these people are some small part of Cobb's subconscious fighting against him, trying to tell him he's dreaming. Or how about how this rich and powerful businessman can somehow make a murder charge disappear with a phone call? Cobb even uses his real name in immigration. Next, let's talk about Cobb's totem. I mean, Maul's totem. But wait. I can't let you touch it. That would defeat the purpose. See, only I know the balance and the weight of this particular loaded die. This, this one was hers. So then that totem is completely meaningless to expose reality. What about the translation of Edith Piaf's song? I regret nothing, I don't care of the past anymore? Or how about that the song is 2 minutes and 28 seconds long and Inception is 2 hours and 28 minutes long? The list goes on and on, and it all leads to Cobb having set up this elaborate scheme to get home. So now again you're thinking, how is this a win? The reason this is a win is that after a dozen or so viewings over the past six years, it's still only my theory that can never be proven one way or another. Nolan created a piece of art with paradoxical ideas that have no true solution. He designed it that way. There is even evidence that what we're told to believe is true as well. Cobb never wears a wedding ring in the real world, his kids are aged when he finally returns to the US, and the top does wobble. The truth is, as Mal puts it, that it doesn't matter because you'll be together. It doesn't matter if the totem is spinning at the end. Cobb has accepted his reality by looking at his children's faces. And that was Nolan's goal, to get you to question reality. And even if Nolan's intention was for us to take this film straight forward by what we're told through the narrative, I'd still love it and it still works. But it's in this way that Nolan incepted us, the viewers. Incepted? Performed Inception on. He planted the idea in our minds to question the reality we're seeing. This film has some of the best set pieces of the last decade. The acting is superb, Nolan's direction is above reproach, and as I already stated, the score captures your attention at every turn and makes the movie what it is. But all of that is nothing compared to what this film does to its viewers and the questions it created that people will discuss for years to come. So do you feel strange now, knowing that Christopher Nolan incepted your mind? If only he could incept the Academy to finally give Leo the Oscar he deserves. Will The Revenant finally be the one? Will he get the recognition he deserves? With Leo's track record, he'll probably get snubbed for Tom Hardy. Don't do that! Don't do that! You mustn't be afraid to dream a little bigger, darling.